Kim, if, you, if, if my memory serves me well, a while ago you came to Dubai, your whole family are here, you are the only one who's been re rebellious and decided to, to be in the Philippines. But um, if my memory serves me well, you came to Dubai just for a short season a while ago and you did the added course with Gateway yeah. and then you finished the added course and left. Do you want to yes, tell us exactly. a little bit about that? Um, yeah, um, we came here to, the Phili uh, to Dubai and uh, looking for work and then uh, we end up here in um, Gateway and then uh, we start uh, going the course of getting connected and then uh, we have received a word that um, God is calling us to go back to the Philippines. Then we left um, Dubai and uh, after that, uh, we just fell in love in the, um, in the church and then received a prophetic word and then we start leading the church. Okay, so th you left here because God spoke to you about going back to the Philippines and then you took over the church from your dad that he'd been leading for a long time, am I right? Yes. And, but now since then, that's 2015 or 16, 14? Smiles. 2012, you took over the church. But since then, what has happened? What has God done since you've taken over the church? Yeah, um, we took the, uh, we, the church was handed over to, to us. And um, after that, we have um, lots of trainings from um, uh, regions beyond. And we have received a, a prophetic word that the uh, Philippines uh, or the church uh, will... Uh, we'll, uh, the picture is we've been stuck in the traffic. And God is opening a lane, a special lane. Then we will accelerate. Then uh, we grasp that uh, prophetic word, uh, live by it, um, pray for it. And then um, uh, over the last seven years, uh, we have been uh, uh, planted uh, six churches. Um, and uh, from one place to another place, we move. From Lagro, from the main church, after two years, we hand over the church to, um, to a guy named Michael, and then we move again to another place called uh, Tarlac City, and uh, we uh, plant there the church uh, with Amber, and uh, we train him and uh, equip him, and then uh, hand over the church again to Amber, and then we move again to another place called uh, Pangasinan. So we are now um, leading the church in Pangasinan uh, for six months, and now another name, a guy named called Barco, he's come, come, came with us and we've been training him and equipping him, praying that we could hand over the church over to him and um, praying that God will open another door of opportunity for us to plant another church. Wow, that is... <clears throat> if that doesn't stay your heart, I don't know what does. In seven years, we've moved and planted six churches. We've been moving as a family from place to place, starting churches, raising up leaders, releasing things, and going forward. I think that's fantastic, isn't it? And, and they are planning to move again. But, I mean, that's a big thing. They are now in Pangasinan, where you guys are leading the church there. And you've been leading that for how long? Six months. Six months. And you're already thinking of handing over. Yes. That's, that's fantastic, isn't it? But in all of this, it's not just being Kim and Smile doing it. It's been a family on a mission. I think there are pictures. Are there pictures? Okay, of all the churches. Maybe you can show some of the pictures even as we, as we speak. It's been a family on a mission, which means their daughter, MJ, has been part of this. And I'm sure for some of us here, you're thinking, okay, you've been doing what? Moving from place to place. What about school? What about this? What about that? And and I, I would love to hear from MJ, who, how old are you now, MJ? Uh, 13. 13, wow. And how has it been for you, obviously going from place to place, and obviously everywhere you go, you have to make new friends, but it sounds like your mom and dad are moving every year. How, how has it worked for you? Well, I would say I adjust easily. So after we move, I would just get to know the other kids there. <laughs> yeah. And I would try to make friends with them. You get to know other kids and you become friends with them. And 
Has, has it been something that you felt dragged into or do you have faith for going from place to place with your mum and dad? Do you, do you get their vision or do, you, do they just wake up in the morning and say, the Lord said we should go and then you uproot and go? <laughs> Speak a bit louder. Well, when we move, I enjoy making other friends because I get to talk to them about take the Bible studies and this. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's amazing. And just, just so you know, there's something else here. Um, I mean, this is amazing. Kim and Smile have been doing the Alpha course, and that's how they've been reaching different communities as well. And they've seen loads of people baptized, loads of people saved through Alpha. But I've just heard recently that MJ has started an Alpha course at age 13. And MJ's dad, who happens to be the pastor of the church, is the one who cooks the food for them when they have an Alpha course. Is that right? Yes. So what made you start an Alpha course? At first, it was my dad that started it, but then one day he needed to do something for the church. And we usually have the Alpha around the afternoon, so we thought we could just wait for him. But it was getting dark, and I got impatient, so I just said, you know what, I'll do it. <laughs> Where is Dylan? I wish he was hearing this. I think that's fantastic, isn't it? Sometimes I think it's just our faith in raising children and all that. And, and I think it's harder to speak into your family and raising children than speak into your marriage. Somehow we are so guarded, isn't it? But actually hearing about this family and how they all embrace the mission of God is quite uplifting. And I hope that as they write their story in the book of God for the future, we too will grasp hold of what has been said and say so we want that to be part of, to be said about us as well. Because I don't want a city gate to be domesticated in any way. And if MJ can lead people to do alpha calls and have her parents just look after them and she is seeing people come to faith, I just pray that by the time you are 18, that there will be hundreds of people who have come to faith and are knowing Jesus. <clears throat> and I, my prayer is that the fire that is in your heart, the Lord will keep it and it will not die out. It will continue to burn and burn and burn. And I want you to pray for our young people here and uh, pray for us that we would see the fire that God has put in your heart, in our young people. Is that okay? Because we want to see the gospel go from town to town, from city to city. We want children from the time they can speak to be saying Jesus. And from the time that they can make a sentence to be talking about the gospel. Because this is what the kingdom of God is about. Is that okay? Can you, can you, can you pray for us? Can you just stretch out your hands um, as well as, and pray for them in your heart? But uh, MJ, can you just pray over the, us, uh, particularly our youth, that will really have a passion for Jesus? Is that okay? Can you do that? Yeah. Uh, Lord, I pray that you will help grow this church to reach out to the other nations, to grow more churches, to help other people learn your word. And I pray that you will help anyone that, is, that has troubles in their own lives whether it may be due to family or work, I pray that you will help them get through it and grow in your word, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we applaud them? <laughs>